Now, the BBC should stop straying from Agatha Christie's storylines or come up with their own ideas. Fair play, and that's the words of Andrew Wilson, an author and expert on the works of Britain's most loved crime writer. This comes as BBC adaptations of Chris's mysteries have come under fire for straying from the original text. Well, joining me now to discuss this is the journalist and broadcaster and the director of the New Culture Forum, Peter Whittle. Hi, Peter, Martin. Yes. always a pleasure to have you in the Thank studio. You. So we see diversity everywhere. You yeah. can't escape it. Um, some may say it's a good thing to reflect the diverse society that we are, but when you're taking liberties with classic piece of literature and even weaving in Nigerian immigrants in the place of retired British policemen, as we saw yes. in the plot of Murder is Easy, is yes. this a step too far? Well, I think what it is, we sort of all know what's what's going on here, really, Martin. I mean, I think the when it comes to, first of all, changing of the plots of these things, um, the fact is is that all it shows is that there's a real major dearth of creative talent mm. because what's happening is whether it's Agatha Christie or any other great classic they get a kind of writer in to reimagine it or shape it in a different way and you sort of feel look why don't you do your own plays why don't you write your own novels you know why don't you come up with your own sort of legendary heroes mm. you know why all this tinkering around and you might say well you know that is uh, you know, it, it's not terribly important. I think it is, actually, because for one good reason, you mentioned their murder is easy. And that, that was um, a Nigerian guy playing the lead in that, which is meant to be a, a white, you know, policeman, retired policeman. And the, the fact is, is that it seems to me that the real uh, targets for this kind of thing are things that are very identifiably English, yeah. the real popular English institutions, sort of, you know, Agatha Christie, uh, you know, P.G. Woodhouse, mm. or even James Bond, may I say. And, you know, we see it, like we've seen it this weekend, with the um, fuss about the paintings of our landscapes that uh, happened in Cambridge. You know, they put these landscapes uh, in an exhibition, and then they sort of said, well, this sort of summons up dark nationalistic feelings. Mm. It's just it's everything that people popularly associate with with England, particularly, in a nice way, is sort of under attack. And it's kind of relentless. Mm. What I find particularly irritating about this as well is that the ma makers of these programmes, they take the Agatha Christie, they tend to be very proud of the authenticity of the programmes. You know, they get the costumes absolutely right, they get all the cars right, mm. you know, all the cutlery right and everything. And then they go and make ridiculous casting decisions, which would not have happened at the time, could not possibly have happened. Yeah, and we often see, you know, dramas set in the 1940s looking more like modern day Islington. Exactly. Don't we? And is, is this, um, do you think then, specifically set out to target things which we cherish? Yes. Now, you mentioned Agatha Christie, we also see the same with Winston Churchill's yes, attacks exactly. and the flag. It's all those things in the popular imagination. It's a very popular idea of uh, Englishness, Britishness, but I think these are quite specifically English. As I said, with the landscape, that's another one. Mm. Every year, I'm doubtless I will come on in September to talk to you about the last night of the proms. We have that mm. now every year. And it's usually emanating from the BBC, but not only from the BBC. Um, and it's sort of daring people to protest. It's daring them to notice. And therefore, you have to kind of say, well, actually, I'll have to ignore that somehow. It doesn't seem right to me somehow, but I'll have to ignore it. And it's therefore undermining, it's constantly undermining, you know, popular ideas of uh, English tradition and what is Englishness in the popular imagination. Mm. And of course, this is a one-way street. We would never see, uh, for example, yeah. a white actor cast as Nelson Mandela, would we? No, of course not. You you wouldn't have a production of, say, Porky and Bess or whatever on the BBC uh, with white actors. Absolutely no chance. It's entirely one way. And, and indeed, if it were the other way, it would be called cultural appropriation. Mm. And is this ever going to stop? Or is it, as you say, specifically designed to rile us, to make us take the bait, and we get called racist and gammon? Oh, yes, we call, you get called all that kind of stuff. I think it is actually not to rile us, but actually to make a political point. Mm. It is to show, really, 
what is considered to be the right and acceptable ideology for our time. And this is, and in answer to your question, Martin, no, I don't think it will stop. So far as the BBC is concerned, the BBC, whatever it might say every so often, is totally unreformable. Frankly, I think it, the licence fee should be scrapped, you know. But um, I think that this seems like a small incident, but when you think about it, you know, it's relentless. Every day there is something else. So as I said, we had this instance with the countryside paintings. So, you know, it's Constable, which is one of the most mm. famous paintings that people love, Constable's Haywain. Mm. You know, is that what? Is that now racist? Is that nationalistic? Why is this being done? Mm. Well, I think you've raised some very interesting points. I think it's been done to, sp to specifically goad us and cajole us mm. and get a reaction. Perhaps that's what they want. They're playing games with us. I think, though, that it's, uh, it, it is the undermining of, of our culture by the very institutions that are meant to protect it. Food for thought. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure, as ever. Peter Whittle, Thank the you. director of the New Culture Forum. Excellent stuff. Now, a quick statement to read out. <coughs> when The Pale Horse was broadcast in 2020, Sarah Phelps, BBC screenwriter, said this. Of course, I've taken liberties. Have I changed loads of stuff? Yeah, of course I have. Otherwise, you'd have 30 hours of TV, and would you want to watch it? No. I always go for the beating heart, what Agatha is, getting at, and she always throws you little clues, little quantum details. details. Yeah, and yet you change them. That's a quote from Sarah Phelps.